Hello everyone, my name is Christina and I'm a medical student studying at Newcastle University and in this video I wanted to give you guys a really in-depth and comprehensive guide on reapplying to medicine. Now just as a disclaimer, I'm, I didn't reapply to medicine, I did get in first try but I've done a bunch of research for this video and I really wanted to give you guys all the information that you need if you are thinking about reapplying with your grades or with different grades, if you're thinking of transferring from biomed to medicine, if you're thinking of doing graduate medicine, if you're thinking of going abroad to Europe. I just wanted to give you guys um, as much information as possible to help you make the decision of what the best option for you to do in terms of reapplying is. So in this video I'm going to be sharing with you things you should be thinking about if you didn't get into medicine first try, ways that you can strengthen your application, all the different universities that you can reapply to if you are um, an A-level student who needs to resit, some information on transferring from biomed to medicine, and I'm going to give you some information on reapplying as an A-level student and reapplying as a graduate as well. So the first thing is you really want to consider why you were rejected. Um, I'm guessing if you're watching this you are thinking about reapplying maybe because you have been rejected from medicine. So there's a number of reasons why you might have been rejected. So if you were rejected pre-interview it probably means that you didn't meet the entry requirements. So it means that your stats, so your GCSEs, UCAT, personal statement, it means that that didn't really line up with the universities that you applied to. So the key thing for you moving forward is that you want to apply to your strengths. I talked a lot more about this in my tips for A-level students applying to medicine video. If you guys want to watch that, it has lots of useful information in it, so I'll link that down in the description box below. If you got rejected post-interview, it just means that you met all the requirements, your personal statement was great, UCAT, BMAT was great, but it, me it meant that you didn't perform very well at interview. And this just means that all you have to work on is maybe your interview um, performance. So maybe work on getting more work experience, getting more volunteering opportunities to talk about or something else, you know, maybe you were quite anxious and your nerve just got in the way and you really didn't, you know, portray yourself very well. I've, I've been there. If you've watched my how I got into medical school video, you know that like nerves really did affect me in my interviews. So I completely get, you know, if that happened to you or maybe you were rejected post interview because you missed your grades. This does happen a lot. And this is probably, I think, the reason most people are reapplying maybe they miss their grades. This is very important to consider why you were rejected because it means that you know what to focus on. You've got a whole entire year now to strengthen your application. You, you might need to strengthen a lot of areas, but for most people, it's just a certain area. So as long as you kind of hone in and really realize, what do I need to improve on? Where, where did I fall down? Um, then you can strengthen that part of your application and then go in stronger next year when you want to reapply. So once you've got an idea of where your application is maybe weaker, you can then start to think about how you can improve your application. So here are some tips on how to strengthen your application. The biggest and obvious one is going to be resetting your A-levels. Now this won't apply to everyone, so feel free to skip to the next bit. I've got all the timestamps links in the description box and in a pinned comment, so feel free to just skip ahead to the bit that you need uh, the most. Resetting your A-levels will strengthen your application a lot. There are a lot of people who can maybe reapply with AAB or three A's, depending on your school, certain requirements, winding participation and stuff like that but for most people um, it will look a lot better on your application if you've taken a gap year you've gotten maybe better grades and you've boosted your application with work experience as well. Another really important thing you want to do is ask for feedback so a lot of universities they will be really really kind to you if you were rejected and they'll give you some feedback as to well you know your interview wasn't very great you didn't mention this this and this or they might say that well we needed you to have 25 points to get an offer and you only had 24. Some universities will be able to give you some feedback and that will be invaluable if you're able to get direct feedback from the people that rejected you it means that you know exactly where you went wrong this is really important because if it was maybe an interview um like issue maybe you didn't perform that well at interview then at least you know that well i just need to strengthen my interview practice or i need to um, reflect more on my work experience think about what i learned from it more that way i can talk about it better at interview it's really important that you get feedback it's so so important and the next way that you can strengthen your application is through work experience so this is probably one that you guys are already thinking about now you don't have to think about straight away like shadow Doing, you know the standard work experience you can have a think about volunteering at a hospice or even a part-time job as maybe a healthcare assistant I know a lot of people who work as like administrators at GP practices I know some people who have worked at like vets before there's such a wide range of the different part-time jobs that you can do and a lot of them will kind of double as work experience because obviously if you're maybe working as a healthcare assistant you'll be maybe on the wards or in a care home and you get direct patient contact so yeah it doesn't have to be directly um, shadowing because I know that's unpaid and stuff and maybe if you guys want to make some 
some money then a part-time job might be better but there are so many options but definitely like a key thing and definitely a top priority for you guys this year in your gap year is to try and get some more work experience to strengthen your application another key thing you want to do is definitely reflect again i think i talked about this more in my tips for a-level students video applying for medicine um but reflecting is the most important thing and this might have been something that maybe you didn't do as much but universities don't really care if you've you know you've watched um a gastric bypass surgery or like um you know these really fancy surgeries medical schools aren't really fussed like exactly what work experience you've done because almost everyone will have some form of work experience or volunteering um so it doesn't matter how fancy or big it is what they want to know is what you've learned and what you've reflected on so not every single applicant is going to have learned about teamwork or they're not going to have taken on board the fact that doctors are very empathetic they're not going to be aware of the communication and stuff like that so what you've taken away is very very key and especially how that's impacted your decision to study medicine so the fact that you've taken a gap year universities will be looking at that so they really want to know how you've reflected on medicine is right for me because I've seen this on my work experience and I know that I'm going to be a good doctor because xyz so definitely try and reflect as much as you can that is a very important thing especially because you've got a year to think about these kind of things so definitely try and reflect as much as you can so if you're reapplying with your grades so maybe you've already got AAA or above then you want to start having a think about well you don't need to do any exams that's great so maybe you're going to be focusing this year on work experience and maybe improving your interview technique so again it goes back to your feedback and the reason why you were rejected if the reason you were rejected was pre-interview then it means that you didn't apply to your strengths so even though you've got the grades you really want to apply to universities that you meet the entry requirements for if you got the grades and you were rejected post interview it goes back to your interview performance and that's something that you want to work on if you're redoing a year and you did not get the grades then your focus is obviously going to be on getting the grades and your exams you also want to have a think about was your grades the only reason you got rejected so did you get you know lots of offers lots of interviews but you just didn't get the grades in that case then we'll keep up with what you did first time around apply to your strengths apply to universities that you meet the entry requirements for and perform really well at interview, talk about your work experience and what you've learned, but you really wanna focus on getting the grades this time. Or maybe that wasn't the case for you, maybe you didn't get the grades and you didn't get any offers or any interviews. In that case, you really wanna think about where do you meet the entry requirements for? That is something that I think is a really, really big thing that no one really thinks about when applying. Applying to medicine is a bit of a game. You do have to be strategic. You do have to really think about where can I get into. It's a shame that we can't really just think about where do I want to go? Like what course is perfect for me? You do have to think about where you can get into. If you watch my video on how to choose a medical school, I think this will be really helpful for you guys. If you're not quite sure how to apply to your strengths, how to be strategic. So yeah, I'll link that in the description box below as well. So personal statement, that's going to be a really big thing for you guys because universities will be looking out what you've done in your gap year and the way that they'll find out about this is through your personal statement most universities will say in their recent policy they want to know what you've spent your gap year doing so they will you know require you to have a paragraph or two talking about maybe part-time jobs work experience volunteering traveling which is perfectly okay as well they do want to know what you've done not only that what have you done and how has it impacted your decision to do medicine so it's not just okay to say well i did x y and z but why what have you learned from those experiences and how has that impacted your decision to do medicine that is key so foundation and gateway courses are an option as well this one won't be applicable to everyone but if you are someone who meets certain criteria such as you live in a deprived area you you have a household income below a certain amount or um you know you're the first in your family to go to university sometimes and now this is key sometimes these foundation courses which you know you have to meet requirements for they will accept resets but you do have to check it's quite difficult i try to research this and have a look at which universities do and don't but i think you're gonna have to ring them up but again this is why i said you know it doesn't apply to everyone so don't worry too much about this if this is something that you're thinking about then it's definitely worth ringing them up and seeing you know do you accept research students i'm a research student i've just done my a levels i got the grades i didn't get the grades will you accept me um so yeah that's worth having to think about as well a very important thing probably if, if anything the most important thing from this video is you really want to look at the reset policies now thankfully if you're a reset applicant you don't have to worry too much because almost every single university does accept resets so you've got a lot of options but there are little details that the, um, different universities will ask for so some universities say that you can only apply twice some say that you can only apply um twice in a row and then you can go away but then come back again some universities say that um 
you can apply but you have to have gotten a better grade than you did last time it's really really different and some universities of course don't even accept resets so it's very important that you look at the reset policies thankfully the medic pool does all the hard work for you and they have a massive list of all the reset policies from every single medical school in the uk and i think in scotland and ireland as well so yeah you don't have to worry too much about going on to each individual website because they do it all for you and it's very important that you have a look there see if you meet the requirements for the universities that you want to apply to because maybe you don't and you'll have to rethink about where you're going to apply to so yeah that is so so important many people don't look at the reset policies and sadly they've not got into medicine the first time they reset and they reapply and they don't get in again because they've not looked at the policies so this is very important guys please 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 check the reset policies i'm just going to give you guys a bit of information about the graduate schemes so if you are a graduate then you're probably aware already but there are two options for you guys if you've already got a degree you can either study the four-year program which is um fully funded by student finance you don't have to pay anything out of your own like money and um it's a four-year program so it's a bit quicker as well and it is more intense but as a graduate I guess you are a bit more mature and you can handle the more intense um academicness I guess um if you are a graduate the thing is with the graduate um course the A101 course it's very very competitive it's a lot more competitive than standard medicine so you will have to have a really high UCAT or a really high GAMSAT and plenty of work experience too if this is something that maybe you don't think you can get into because it's too competitive um, then you can apply just for the regular undergraduate course even if you are a graduate the thing is with this um, you will have to self-fund it so you can't apply for student finance you'll have to find a way to pay you know the nine thousand pounds every single year yourself I know a lot of people who um, kindly their parents pay that you know cost for them and some people who because they're a graduate they work part-time on the weekends to fund the course you will have to self-fund it that is the only thing if you want some more information on graduate graduate entry medicine there are some amazing youtubers who are medics who are graduates um, some of them are I think graduate medic um, hey Olivia and starry ad medic so I'll link them all in the description box below so if you want more information directly from some graduates then definitely check them out so another option if you are reapplying is if you don't think you'll get into medicine then you could consider transferring from biomed to medicine this again all routes into medicine are competitive so, so yes this is a competitive route but all methods of getting into medicine are competitive pretty much all the universities that do offer this i'll put a list here all the universities that do offer this have a similar format so basically you study either biomed biochemistry biomedical genetics biomedical science medical science one of those courses and you have to perform very very well academically so some of them do give you a, a specific percentage that you need to get for example Andrea Ruskin says that you need a minimum of 75% in your first year um, you know you do need to perform really well on top of that you usually have to submit a formal application so you'll have to do the UCAT you'll have to do a personal statement an interview all of that sometimes you don't um, so depending on which universities on this list you're thinking of um, you know the requirements might be different for you they all pretty much say the same thing if you do really well in your first year and submit a formal application you do well in the interview then you can transfer from that course into medicine and normally you transfer from year one of biomed or whatever it is into year one of medicine and then you'll carry on the regular five years from there again as i mentioned this is a competitive option because as you can imagine biomed is one of those courses where a lot of the people studying biomed want to do medicine so don't let that stop you from pursuing this option just because you're worried that it's competitive all methods of getting into medicine are there's also the option of clearing so I just wanted to talk a little bit about clearing basically if you are thinking of doing clearing maybe you have reapplied and you still haven't gotten any offers then there is the option of clearing thankfully medicine has been a clearing option for the past few years on results day you'll need to have your clearing number and your regular UCAS number and you should definitely bring a notepad and a pen and a fully charged phone on the on results day to make sure that you can ring up all the university that you're thinking of going to through clearing and ask them if they will accept you with your grades um, but yeah this is also an option as well again it's worth checking the reset policies because sometimes universities through clearing might not accept research students but i'll leave links to wherever you can get more information on this and then studying medicine in europe so over the past few years studying medicine in bulgaria slovenia italy that's become a lot more popular thankfully these countries especially in i think eastern europe um their tuition fees are a lot cheaper the thing is with studying in europe it's normally self-funded so you have to pay for the course yourself you know obviously normally people get their parents to pay for it and stuff like that but so that is something to think about if you've completely given up with medicine in the uk then this is an option and um, there are so many websites and agencies that pretty much like do all the hard work for you and you just apply to the website i think and they just 
help you get to Bulgaria or whatever it is that you want to go to so that is an option as well so I just wanted to finish off this video with some final tips if you are reapplying you should definitely sign up to the student room I'm sure you already have but on there you'll be pretty much getting all the up-to-date and recent information on offers interviews when they're coming out and stuff and you'll be able to speak to other students who are reapplying um, or just regular students as well and get some information from them too you should definitely keep up to date with the medic portal as well so the medic portal do this thing where every single week they send you some of the most recent medical news not just vaccines and like genetic stuff they normally send you a bit of information about admissions as well so it's definitely worth signing up to their newsletter I think they send it out every single week to keep up to date with everything with them and also this is a bit of a random one but if you're taking a gap year definitely try and keep up like a hobby or a sport or something again I mentioned this in my tips for A-level students video but it's very important and impressive to medical schools when you have a sport or a hobby that you take part in especially regularly over a long period of time and if you're taking a gap year and all your friends have gone off to uni I think it can be quite lonely at times I can imagine you know being on your own in a whole new year group that might be a bit nerve-wracking so it's worth taking up a hobby or a sport so that you have a community of people that you can speak to regularly and it looks amazing on your application and your personal statement as well if you can say that you know this year I took up football or netball or whatever it is during my gap year I just wanted to give you guys a bit of inspiration before I ended this video but I know if you're reapplying to medicine you're probably feeling really really down initially because you know you've applied to medicine and you've not, and you've not been able to get in but and you know maybe you've watched this video and realized oh my gosh it's so competitive it's really difficult there's so many more hoops to jump through but honestly please, please guys if you can try and just stay as confident as possible I know this is really really difficult coming from a medical student who's you're probably thinking like you're already there you've already got in but I know how important and how much of an impact having confidence in yourself has when I applied to medicine you can probably tell from my how I got into medical school video if you want to watch that I'll link it down below I was very confident in myself when I was applying I really didn't doubt myself I knew it was competitive but I always just thought to myself I'm gonna do the research I'm gonna make sure my application is strong I'm gonna do as much work experience as I can I'm gonna volunteer as much as I can I just did everything that I could to make sure that I maximized my chances but if you can imagine there's 10 people applying to medicine and nine of them are like oh my gosh it's so competitive I'm not gonna get in and then there's one person who says well yes it's competitive but I'm gonna do my research improve my application and do my work experience and get you know um, lots of hobbies I'm gonna boost my application who do you think is most likely to get in self-belief and confidence goes a long long way rather than worry about how competitive it is just think about every single thing that you can do to boost your application what is in your power what is in your control right now and what can you do to make sure that your application is amazing it's gonna stand out don't worry too much about it being competitive medicine is gonna be competitive at every single stage and it's competitive because it's a very rewarding career it's a career that a lot of people want a lot of people are passionate about so don't be disheartened about how competitive it is it's gonna be worth it in the end when when you get in I'm confident in you guys I'm sure if you're watching this then you're obviously doing your research you are gonna be a really strong candidate I'm 100% sure I think sometimes the power of a positive mindset is underestimated so guys honestly I know it's easy to be down and be negative and you know doubt yourself but try not to honestly I believe in you guys so so much so thank you so much for watching this video guys next week I'm gonna be sharing some tips on first year medical students on how you can settle into uni and different tips for you guys just on your first year of medicine so stay tuned for that make sure you subscribe thank you so much for watching bye